Welcome back to Phillips Hot Rod Garage. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Save the Rustiest Model A on the Planet. It's a new year, but we got the same old project. <laughs> and there's a lot to do. I need to get this old Ford Y block running. And I need to cut these small block Chevy mounts out of this 32 sedan, put these Ford mounts in. I need to put some primer on this thing. I don't even know what I'm gonna do with this thing. Oh, I got a lot to do. I got this Hemi I gotta get built. I got a firewall I gotta get built. I need to build a work table along this wall right here. I need to finish tearing down this old flathead because I don't even know if the block's any good. So yeah, it's a new year. And we got plenty to do. We got a lot of work ahead of us this year. So I appreciate you guys hanging around. I need to figure out how to get this rear end changed from a five on four and a half lug pattern to a five on five lug pattern. I need to hang this sign up on the wall. And it looks like I'm about to narrow this rear end. Yeah, that's not gonna work. It's gonna be an exciting year. We've made a lot of progress on the Model A since I started the channel and we've got plenty more to do. Oh, look at all that work that's gotta be done. I got some big plans for this year. We got some really cool stuff to work on. Got some neat stuff coming up on the channel. This year, we're gonna work on some other stuff. The 37 pickup is coming up really soon. I got a little bit more work I, got, I wanna get done in the back of this Model A first, but I'm gonna work on the 37 pickup really soon, that's coming. But what are we gonna do this week? Oh yeah, part five of the subrail install in the Model A. Well, it sounds like we got some rain on the roof. We got a storm brewing. Hopefully you can hear me okay. What we've got going on here is I went ahead and measured the rear body cross member, made sure that my center mark that I had made previously was in the correct location, and it is. So then I made a center mark on the rear body panel right here. And then I went ahead and put it back on, put a couple of bolts in there. And what I gotta do before I can get back on the subrail install is I gotta get this and this to fit perfect so that I can verify the location of my quarter panels. Because if I don't have this centered correctly with this cross member, and then I bolt these quarters up and try to put these sub rails in, everything's gonna be a little bit off. I gotta make sure everything's lined up perfect. So let me bring you in here and show you what the problem with this is. So I brought you in a little bit closer. So hopefully you can see what's going on. I'm trying to get this line even all the way down. So I'm gonna get a point of reference here. All right, that's how far this panel is in from this cross member. That looks good. So if I come down the panel, looks real good so far. Till I get to about right here. When I get right here, this panel starts to turn in. And by the time I get to the end down here, I don't know, we're probably, I'd say at least an eighth to a quarter range, too far in. So I've got to get this panel over to the stretcher and I've got to stretch that lip out to make this fit correctly. So let's get a mark 
so we'll know where to start stretching. We'll start right there. Let's get this thing over to the stretcher. Ooh, that rain's really coming down now. There's a lot of humidity in the air. Everything in the shop is wet. Look at this golf cart windshield. Everything in here is wet. I can see like fog in the air. I've never seen my shop like this. That was too much. That moved a whole lot faster than I thought it would. I better go back the other way. Well, since I went too far with it and had to go back, I lost my place. Now I gotta go back, stick it back on there. What do I do with my screws? Where my other clamps go? Well, call it luck, call it skill, call it whatever you want to call it, but it's right the first time. Stuck this in there, stretcher, stretched it too far, had to go back and shrink it a little bit because I could see it was bowed in. It moved a lot further than I thought it was going to move, but hey, I shrunk it back a little bit the other way, put it back on here so that I could test it and see where I was at, and <laughs> it was perfect. I bet I can't do that again. I mean, couldn't do that again if I tried. All right, so here's what we got to do next. We got the rear body panel here and the cross member lined up good. Now we got to shift everything forward just a little bit. You can see by looking at this that that rear cross member's got to go forward just a little bit. Not much, but it's got to line up with a quarter right here, and it's a little too far back. So I need to cut the tacks off of this tubing right down here so I can slide that cross member forward just a little bit.
All right, I got the driver's side loose. Now I gotta move over to the passenger side. All right, that's got both sides loose. So now let's see if we can get this quarter and this rear cross member lined up. All right, so the quarter's bent just a little bit. I'm gonna try to straighten it out some. That helped a little. Helped it a little bit. That helped it a bunch. It's amazing what beating on it to do for it. Might be a little bit too far forward. Now, I'll bump it back some. It moves really easy now. That looks real good. Wow, looking great. Yeah, it's been out right there. That needs to go in. I'm gonna have to get a different hammer. Philip, you gotta stop prying against that piece. It's not what you're supposed to be doing, buddy. All right. So the problem is the quarter is bent in right here. It's just rusty and it's weak. So it's just in a little. I might get on the inside with something and try to knock it out. I'll try to do that real quick. All right, a screwdriver, not the right tool for the job, but I wasn't hitting it very hard, and it's an old one. Don't care much about, so old junk one. Yeah, that screwdriver wasn't really the tool for the job. But it worked. Okay. Now, 
Ready to go back forward with this again. Just like that. Check it. I think that ought to work right there. I think it will. I think it'll work. All right, that looks a lot better. That's what it needed. This line here looks a whole lot more consistent now. It looks pretty consistent with what I got going on over here. So I think that'll work out. I think it'll work good. And just in case you're wondering, we got to put these on too. Don't know when, but at some point we'll be putting these in. Now the other side's a whole lot worse than this side, but this side's rusty too at the bottom. So I may not put much of it in, Probably just a little narrow strip right at the bottom, but definitely some of that new patch panel is going to have to be put in for sure. All right, so now we got to move over here to the driver's side. Now this side is a lot more rusty and they've got a big patch panel put in that's not correct for the car. It's just something they scabbed on there many years ago. So it's going to be a little bit harder to figure out than the other side, but I still think we can get it really close all right so even with a whole bunch of material missing here you can really see this line how it comes down up here and it comes all the way to right there so from here to here i can get a good idea of what's going on and you can see right there the cross member is definitely too far back i think if i line this straight edge up here with that edge right there that's going to put me in the ballpark so you can tell it's got to go forward a pretty good bit. You can look at that and see it's got to go forward. So hopefully I can move it fairly easily like I did on the other side. We'll give it a whirl. Let's see what happens. It moved really easily. That's just what I needed to happen. And that's pretty close. All right, it's in the ballpark. I think this thing's twisted. Guys, it's really hard to build something out of nothing. And when you got nothing to go by, it's just kind of a guessing game, you know? But I think it's gonna be pretty close, maybe. All right, so let's take a look at it. It's getting there, it's really close. We were like this far off when we started. Now we're pretty much there. I might bump it forward just a grunt more, maybe like that far, and call it good. All right, so let's take one last look at it. I think that's pretty good. I'm gonna ride with that. Now when I put the patch panel in right here, I'll be able to get it perfect then. But I think that's close enough now for what we're trying to accomplish with these sub rails. Of course, the way they got all this mangled up right here, it's not gonna fit right, right in here, definitely. I'll handle that later. All right, so I wanna take a couple of quick measurements. We're 47 and 11 sixteenths 
on the driver's side. Let's check the passenger side. You're not going to believe it. 47 and 11 sixteenths on both sides. I think that's pretty good for the way I went about it. And that's what I call progress. We're moving in the right direction. So let's see what's going to happen with this trunk. not good but it's not terrible hmm All right, so as you can see, it's not perfect. Nowhere near perfect, but it's in the ballpark. I believe I can, I can work with it from here. You can see I got the gap across the front lined up right. Here's the passenger side at the top. Driver's side at the top, those are pretty even. But when you come down here to the driver's side at the bottom, it's really wide. Passenger side at the bottom is close. So what that tells me is the entire back section down here, quarter panels, rear body panel, and the rear cross member all have to shift toward the passenger side. Once I get that done and squared up, I think I'll be ready to start locking those subrails back down. So yeah, this is just part of the process. All right, so it's looking good. I'm real happy with the cross member and the rear body panel and the quarter panels. I'm happy with the way that's turning out. That's all fitting together good. I know you guys were expecting on this video to see more work getting done on the subrails, but part five of the subrail install is working on getting the car squared up so I can lock the subrails down in place. You just can't put subrails in a car that's out of square. It just won't work. If you don't square the car up first, you don't get everything fitting first. When you start locking things down and you start welding things in place, you're welding things in out of square and out of place. And if you do that, then your car, when you're done, is all twisted and warped and nothing lines up. Doors won't close right, trunk won't close right. I've seen people try to build cars with gaps like this, never try to fix them. And then once they get in here and start trying to get everything to line up in the end, they have to start cutting off work that they did previously because they didn't take the time to square it up first. So yeah, part five of the subrail install is getting everything squared away. So in the next video, we gotta get in here and get this part shifted over to where this trunk lines up a little better. Once we get that lined up better, then I'll be ready to start attaching the subrails permanently down in the back corners back in here. I can't do that until I get everything squared away. Also coming up in the next video, we're going to be working on these pieces that go here. We got to get those pieces squared away. And we've also got to start cutting out all this square tubing. Unfortunately, I want to leave all that in here, but I can't because it's in the way of putting in the floor pans and getting the subrail settled in the back. That is one of the reasons why I have to get all this squared up now because I've got to cut out all my bracing. So hope you guys enjoyed the video this week. This is the first video that I've recorded of the new year. So I hope you guys all had a great new year. I appreciate all you guys watching. Thank you for your support. 
thank you for your time to watch my videos. I appreciate the opportunity to be able to bring this, this content to you guys, and I appreciate you guys watching it. So keeping me motivated. You may not realize that, but a project like this is tough. It's, it's a huge undertaking. So the opportunity to be able to make the videos and have you guys to watch them, a lot of times is just huge motivation for me to get out here and keep going on this project. Hey, I could be sitting there watching this old hot rod build his. I could be watching old Rat Rod Bob. I could be watching Bad Chad and Jolene build their cars. Who else? Um, I don't know, there's just so many good channels I like to watch, but I could be there watching them, but instead I'm out here working on mine making some videos for you guys to watch. So I really appreciate you guys watching. Like old Rat Rob Bob says, he says he's got the best subscribers in the world. I don't know about that, Bob. I think I do. Appreciate you guys. See you guys in the next one.